Bike riders will have been glad of a rest before getting stuck into part one of this marathon stage, a 302km liaison before tackling the rally's second longest time section, 425 kilometers at over 3,500 metres above sea level. So high altitude rain and mud to deal with in this seventh stage, but that wasn't enough to dampen the local spirits at the start line. Bolivia's top rider, Daniel Nasiglia, given a presidential send-off by Eva Morales on his way to 13th place. Toby Price riding with KTM teammate Antoine Mayo, the stage six winner. 2016 champion Price finishing fourth. He continues to improve after almost a year off the bike. Another day, another fine ride from Kevin Benavides in third, his fourth podium in seven stages, but he managed to lose the overall lead. Adrian Van Beveren snatching it back from the Argentine. What a dack are the Frenchman's having on his Yamaha. Every day I try to do my best. I have no particular strategy to attack on specific days for the time being. But it was a bittersweet day in the end for Joan Barreda, the stage winner. The Spaniard put the hammer down from the get-go and stormed clear. He would go on to claim his third victory of the rally in style. However, at the 300-kilometre mark, the Honda man suffered a serious crash and it may spell the end of his Dakar. I had a big crash at kilometre 300 when I went off-piste. I think that I may have broken my knee because I was completely unstable. I'm in real pain. It was very difficult to ride after that. So we'll go back to the bivouac and we'll see what we can do. Well, Bereda arriving at the bivouac and going straight to the medical tent. It says something that he was able to win the stage after riding injured for over 100 kilometers. But there are now doubts hanging over the rest of his Dakar adventure. In the end, Bereda won by just under three minutes from Van Beveren and eight from Benavides. Price and Pablo Quintanilla, fourth and fifth. Van Beveren regains the race lead from Benavides, with Bereda closing the gap to 4.45. Matthias Wagner and Price make up the top five. Now, as the cars prepare to hit Bolivia's lush mountains, we've had five different stage winners out of six so far. The podium is still possible, a victory is possible. Anything is possible, problems, breakdowns, retirement. Martin Prokop continues to run well in his Ford. The Czech driver was seventh overall at the start of the day, fifth quickest on the stage. The minis of Boris Garafalik and Jacob Przegonski looking very, very good today. The young Polish star posting the fourth quickest stage time. Good job. For De Villiers, the higher suspension and four-wheel drive of the Toyotas could make all the difference on these fast, muddy stages. This morning, the 13-time Dakar winner and rally leader Stefan Petterhansel decided to lead from the front, but this terrain is very different from the soft dunes for the two-wheel drive Peugeots and their lower suspension. And look, at 186 kilometers into the stage, he stopped. Broken rear suspension and shock absorber. That's the beauty of having the third Peugeot of Cyril Dupre still running. The French Dakar legend has stopped to help his senior teammate. The engineering skills of all four are tested. Co-driver Jean-Paul Cotre and David Castera turning mechanics to help. There were massive puddles. There was a biker stopped and we wanted to pass on the left quite fast. We didn't see anything, but there was a massive rock and it destroyed the back of the car. A big sacrifice from Dupre to help Peter Hansel continue at the expense of his own car. Even so, that's one hour, 45 minutes lost once the crew of the 300 car got going again. And then there was one. Remember, since his win in 2010 and a third place in 2011, Carlos Sainz has failed to finish the Dakar all five times. This is his chance to keep it on the road and maybe take a historic win on the last event for the Peugeot factory team. He wins the stage. I don't know exactly what happened to Stefan, but it was again a very difficult stage with lots of tricky off-piste. So much can happen on such a rally. Each stage is difficult. It's just a question of survival. A second consecutive stage win for Sainz, De Villiers and Alatia running him close, but still 12 and 14 minutes behind, respectively. 
Science dramatically takes the lead after stage seven, and NASA Alatia leapfrogs Ten Brinker and moves up to second from fourth.